a schedule for the day, but you can't put a schedule on grief. You can't put a schedule on grief. At this moment, we're going to ask everybody to just stay where you are and keep where you are. But this family, we need some medical support right now, and that's why we're going to the first aid is on here and they're providing support so until such time as the family have to support we're gonna just ask you to take it here for a
883 people since 1990. Too many. Out of those people, there has only ever been one, one successful criminal prosecution. And it was last year. Yeah. Only last year. Do you think he got charged with murder? No, it was manslaughter. Why? Why don't we get the same justice? Why don't we get the same justice? Why are our brothers serving prison sentences for joint enterprises for something they didn't do? Collective responsibility. But when it comes to police, not even one, not even one can be held responsible. No. It's important for that context. Because what happened to Chris has happened before. And it's gonna happen again if we don't make a serious change to this system. As long as the police have the power, the tools, the resources, the money, they're gonna keep killing us. They're gonna keep killing our people. Because it's an inherently racist and violent institution. Yeah. Racist and violent. Yeah. Yes. Next person, this is Jefferson. And he's gonna share some of what's been happening. Give it up for Jefferson. Chris Carver! Chris Carver! Alright guys, thanks for coming. And it means a lot to the families and valuable. And I can't even articulate how much it means to us. When I found out the tragic news that Chris was killed, I was at work in my office. I cried on the floor, absolutely inconsolable. It felt like a nightmare and I knew that my world was about to get turned upside down. And one word that remained at the forefront of my mind, one word that I kept repeating to myself, and one word that I felt that I desperately needed an answer to, that why? word was why. Why? We deserve the opportunity to look his killer in the eyes and ask why. Why did you take this beautiful soul after him having spent so little time on earth? Why did you not have mercy on him as he sat there in the car, defenseless, unarmed, scared and terrified? Why did you destroy the possibility for me to tell him that I love him, as I occasionally did? And why did you destroy the possibility for him to reply, I love you too, big cuz? Why does his mother have to grow old whilst her firstborn child lies six foot under, no longer graced with the possibility of witnessing that beautiful sight? Why did you take a friend, a loving partner, a son, a confidant, a soon-to-be father? And as much as that police officer who stole the life of my cousin lays bare the hatred that exists in this world, the countless people who have come together for me and the family offering all kinds of support and heartfelt sympathies lays bare the love that will always exist to fight against it. Guys, thank you. Thank all of you, every single one of you today. We couldn't have done this alone. This was organized in one day. This was all organized in one day. Please clap, clap for yourself. All these people, we came together within 24 hours to organize this. So it shows we can come together. What my family are going through, what you lot are not seeing behind the scenes, behind closed doors, is the constant fainting, the no eating, the no sleeping. Even after the funeral, after everyone's gone on with their lives, this still continues. The fight still continues. We need all of you to stay with us. Even after the funeral, it's not done. It's not done. It's not gonna be done. Stay with us. I appreciate you guys. If you lot wanna help the family, if you lot wanna help the wider community, live. Tell them. Live. Please, we need you. We need you. Look how many men are around here. Look how many men are protecting us. 
Your community men are uplifting us. We can't do this alone. Do you not want us to be just what? A nation of just black women by ourselves. We can't just protect each other. We need you. We need all of you lot. Yeah? We need all of you lot. So all that street shit that's happening, yeah? Just remember, you lot are here, yeah? In protest against the real ops. Yeah? You hearing that? Are you hearing that? You're not each other's ops. Someone lied to you lot. You're not each other's ops. Yeah? Because what's going to be done when this ops takes one of us out? What do we do? What do we do? How do we ride out without going in jail? Without getting killed as well? Huh? How do we do that? As a community, we need to come together, strategize. Yeah? Or some all war shit. Yeah? Strategize. That's what we need. All of you guys, stay connected to the family. As I said, we need you. We can't do this alone. People don't have a history of, of treating the police with violence. Black people don't have a history of violence against the police. The police have a history of inflicting our communities with violence. We are not a violent people, but we have to defend our own. I want to tell you something, be proud of yourself for coming out. Be proud because, you know, the, the country had a death recently. And a lot of institutions, white-led institutions, decided to call off all of their actions. They even cancelled strike action. They called off all of the things that they had going on because the Queen has died. A 96-year-old woman who died peacefully in her bed. And they call themselves anti-racist. But let me tell you something. We are the anti-racists right here. Why didn't they come here? They called off their action. They called off their action. Why didn't they come here and defend the family? When they come out after this, when they come out, and they come back with their anti-racism nonsense, remind them, remind them who was here to defend Chris Carver and who was here to support the family. We are the anti-racists here. Whose lives matter? Black lives matter! Whose lives matter? Black lives matter! We've had to depend on ourselves to come out and defend the family. This young man, 24, to be assassinated by the police. It was an assassination. Do you agree? Do you agree? It was an assassination. An unarmed man was murdered in his car. He had no arms. He was sat in his car. They boxed him in and they assassinated him. Do you agree? Yes. Are we going to let the police get away with another murder? Say his name. Chris Cobber. Say his name. Chris Cobber. Say his name. Chris Cobber. Let me tell you something. And I'm telling you, the fight is a... But I think it's important to give respect where respect is due. Because Tottenham, they lost too many lives. Too many lives. And it's important that we recognise the same thing they did to Chris is the same thing they did to Mark Douglas. Hard stop. They've been supposed to stop using that tactic from they killed Ezel Rodney, 2005. They're not supposed to teabag anyone. There needs to be a review. That tactic needs to be stopped. Because the only thing that happens, people end up getting killed. If they listened after Mark, Chris would be alive. First of all, I just want to send my condolences and utmost respect, love, manners, respect, power, spiritual blessings and love to the family because this shouldn't be happening. It keeps happening and it shouldn't be happening. And the sad thing is, when it comes to this marching and Black Lives Matter and coming and standing up and speaking, I'm feeling like I'm getting too experienced. I don't want to be experienced in this. We don't want to be experienced in this. As a kid, I grew up watching my uncle and my dad wrestling, fighting, tangling, warring with the system for my whole life. And when the police came into my dad's house and tasered him down the stairs and tried to kill him, they missed. 
they didn't get through. And what hurts is that in any other professional establishment, you'll be held accountable. When you make a mistake, you hold your hands up. When, you're, when you make a mistake, you'll be held accountable in any other professional institution, any other one. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No racist police, police on our streets. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. Get this. Six 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 is the mark of the beast. You turn it around and, and you, you get, get the, the police. police. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. So I've heard some people. This is just going to be a quick thing. You've heard people introduce me, my name's Stafford Scott, I come from a place called Tottenham. I've been campaigning these kind of campaigns, following the murders in custody of black people in our community since 1985, when police murdered Cynthia Jarrett. Sometimes they get us to play their game and now we're going to say we're not playing their game no more. We're not waiting years for this to be concluded. We want to know how Chris was killed. Chris was executed. We need answers now. So please support this family in their demands. Number one, release the body cam footage. Number two, suspend every police officer involved. Number three, release a timeline of how long this investigation will take. Those three, because the, it's already a homicide investigation now. Those three, to introduce to introduce the brother that's going to also be supporting this family. Man like Stormzy, thank you. What's going on everyone? Um, I don't even really like to, in these moments, like I was very hesitant to come up here because I know a lot of the time, even with my name and how the British media stays, they try and turn these things into like some other thing and use my name in a way like, ah, oh, and try and make this about me and it's nothing, to, it's nothing about me, it's about us and it's about the family, and it's about everyone grieving. Um, Chris has a mother, he has a family, he has brothers, he has friends, people who knew him in real life, who, for them, this is unbearable, so. The only reason why I'm up here is because I understand that, do you know what I mean? If, you, if we've been given every, any sort of voice or any sort of platform, we should use it, because I guess I know it helps, do you know what I mean, so. Um, someone said something before I got up here, and I just want to reiterate on that, like, Everyone here today, I just encourage everyone to have stamina. Yeah. And I know it's, it's probably, it's a very difficult thing to say and it's, it's not even nice because no one should have the stamina to go on a journey like this, or stamina to get justice, or stamina to go and get answers. But when these people do these things, they get away with it because what happens is we do this once and we get tired, we tweet and we get tired. We do it for a week, we do it for two weeks, we do it for a month and they know we get tired, they know that. They know that this last once, we might come back one more time, but I just encourage everyone in whatever capacity, do whatever you can do to help, like whatever you can do, whether it's coming to this march, whether it's these amazing people here, whether it's supporting.